It's a tale of mythic villains and heroes, betrayal, redemption, revenge, love, and loss. Ancient creatures devoted to protecting the world around them transplanted to these modern times, removed from a world of magic, thrust into a world of skyscrapers and downtown traffic. Part Beauty and the Beast, part Batman, loaded with Shakespearean influence. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Gargoyles. Gargoyles is a 78-episode animated series produced by Walt Disney Television. It ran for three seasons from October of 1994 to February of 1997. The overwhelming bulk of that storytelling taking place during the 52 episodes of season two. Gargoyles is the story of a clan of magical creatures transplanted from their home, a castle in 10th century Scotland, to 20th century New York City. During the day, gargoyles exist as decorative stone statues, deterring unwelcome visitors with their fearsome appearance and threatening posture. By night, the stone becomes flesh as they transform into living beings, taking a more active role in the protection of their residents and the surrounding area. One thousand years ago, their castle was attacked, which resulted in the destruction of most of the gargoyles while they were still frozen as stone statues. The ones that survived were blamed and then cursed to remain stone until their castle rises above the clouds. And now, in the year 1994, they awaken to find that their home has literally been relocated to the top of a New York City building, meticulously rebuilt by an obscenely wealthy man named David Xanatos. Their skyscraping relocation has fulfilled the conditions of the curse, and they are once again brought to life. While the geography has changed, while many of their friends and family are lost to the passage of time and smashing, their willingness to do good, to protect the innocent and fight back against the forces of evil continues to be not only their motivation, but the main bond they share as a family. To the degree that a show like this from a company like Disney can be credited to a single creator, Gargoyles was created by Greg Wiseman. You may know Greg from his writing at DC Comics, his work as both writer and executive producer on Star Wars Rebels, or Spectacular Spider-Man, Max Steel, or lots of others. Greg was an integral part of the initial development of Gargoyles well before it looked and felt like the show it became. Multiple people had input on the development of the concept, but Greg adopted it and raised it as his creative baby. Uh, fortunately, our hero doesn't have to face those barbarians alone. Uh, this is Goliath's old friend Hudson, a veteran gargoyle warrior. Hudson helps out by keeping an eye on the young warriors in training. Brooklyn, Lexington, and Broadway. Uh, they pick their own names. And then there's Bronx, the angst-ridden gargoyle dog. Bronx is not a big fan of adventure. He just likes to eat a lot, sleep a lot, and make a general mess. Before it was the character-driven superhero drama, it was a comedy, like Gummy Bears, DuckTales, Chippendales, Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, or any of the other popular Disney cartoons of the late 80s and early 90s. It was much lighter in tone, and it would go through multiple revisions before it would be picked up for a series by Disney. It was the turn to drama, the focus on a character who was not part of the original comedic pitch, Goliath, that eventually solidified the concept. Nearly every previously existing character would be retained and rewritten based on their relationship to Goliath. Look, it was the 90s, everything was getting darker and edgier, and ironically, twas darkness that brought the series to life. Batman the Animated Series was two years into being a monster hit over at Fox, and everyone else was trying to capitalize on that success. Some shows went further than others. Gargoyles recruited Frank Paul, who had directed 16 episodes of Batman, as well as husband and wife writers Michael Reeves and Bryn Chandler Reeves, with 35 episodes of Batman between them. Frank, Michael, and Bryn would duplicate that creative output for Gargoyles. Gargoyles wasn't a typical 22-minute commercial for a toy line that had been so popular through the 80s. It was driven by a dramatic narrative story with deliberate character development over time. Evolution took place through specific planned arcs. Characters grew and changed, and their relationships to each other reflected that. The 13-episode season one was so well-received that Disney ordered a full 52-episode second season. Everything expanded, deeper mythology, more characters, more story editors, more directors, more writers, and a much larger cast. Gargoyles had one of the greatest casts for any animated series ever, absolutely stacked with all-star performers from top to bottom. Actors from Star Trek the original series, Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek Voyager. There were a lot of Star Trek stars in feature roles or that made guest appearances. Weird, right? I mean, both shows were big into Shakespeare illusions, if not direct references, concepts, and characters. But what's the deal? 
Gargoyles was anchored by Keith David as Goliath. His voice speaks for itself. But he was complimented by Next Generation's Jonathan Frakes as Xanatos and Marina Sirtis as Demona, both wrapping up their initial television run as Commander Riker and Counselor Troy, respectively. Casting is casting. In theory, everyone earned their respective roles, but there's no doubt that members of the Gargoyles production were fans of Star Trek, and having two members of the cast already on payroll made it easier to reach out to other Star Trek performers, proven professionals. And as far as Disney was concerned, where's the harm in a little cross-promotion with a wildly successful long-term franchise that brings with it an audience that they were trying to reach as well? Look, I don't want to just read a list of names for the next three misnet misnets. <laughs> 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 I jumped forward to Ed Asner, and, and minutes and Ed Asner, minutes and Asner became one word. Miznitz. Look, I don't want to just read a list of names for the next three minutes. Ed Asner, Jeff Bennett, Sally Richardson, Whitfield, Bill Fagerbaki. But you don't just see this kind of star power on a cartoon series every day. <laughs> you don't. John Reese davies Clancy Brown, Jim Cummings, Sheena Easton, Matt Frewer, Tim Curry, Michael Dorn, Brent Spiner, Richard Grieco, Robert Culp. Maybe we just put up a scroll like we're selling a music collection? Kate Mulgrew, Diedrich Bader, CCH Pounder, Nichelle Nichols, Tony J, Tony Shalhoub, James Avery. How much would you pay? LeVar Burton, Cole Meany, Rob Paulson. I gotta tell you, the script just wrote itself. Jim Belushi, David Warner, and of course, Frank Megatron Welker. When they come alive, evil can't survive! Gargoyles! Disguised as a gargoyle, the evil Xanatos swoops into attack! But mighty Goliath breaks free! Lexington fires! And heroic Brooklyn charges into battle on the Ripon Rider Cycle! Get him! Xanatos is stunned! And Goliath flies in to unmask him! Got you, Xanatos! When gargoyles come alive, evil can't survive! Gargoyles! Goliath, Brooklyn, Lexington, Xanatos! Other figures and vehicles eat sold separately, but not blue. While Gargoyles wasn't created to promote a line of toys, you can always do it the other way around. In 1995, Kenner produced a series of five-inch scale figures with gimmicks abundant, multiple vehicles, and a playset. But Disney didn't stop at toys. There were all kinds of other things with Gargoyles branding. Clothing, lunchboxes, school supplies, costumes, bedsheets, comic books, and video games. Time for a quick round of Is It Canon? How well can a giant corporate octopus like Disney control all of their marketing arms? Can they maintain storytelling quality and consistency across their associated media? Gargoyles first appeared in comics as part of Disney's monthly print magazine called Disney Adventures in 1994. The short stories weren't produced by the same creative team as the show, so while they may be entertaining, is it canon? No, Disney Adventures had their own staff of writers and editors, and at no time was the story team, and certainly not Greg Wiseman, consulted on the content of those stories. Therefore, they are not canon. Marvel Comics, who Disney had considered purchasing at the time, published 11 issues of Gargoyles from December of 1994 to October of 1995. A 12th issue was announced, but never published as the series was canceled due to low sales. Two characters actually appeared in the Marvel series before making their debut appearances on the show. That said, nearly a year's worth of comic storytelling is it canon. Once again, Greg Wiseman was only casually consulted on the generalities of the world of Gargoyles, not the details of the stories or characterization, nor the chronology of events or how they fit into the established world of the television series. So, no, all 11 Marvel comics are not canon. From 2006 to 2009, Slave Labor Graphics, in association with Creature Comics, published a direct continuation of the events of Season 1 and Season 2 of the animated series, completely intentionally ignoring all 13 episodes of Gargoyle Season 3, The Goliath Chronicles. The comics, written by Greg Wiseman, were published as two series, Gargoyles and a spin-off called Bad Guys. Collected versions of the series included all 18 issues that Greg wrote, even though some of those were never previously published. The books were canceled in 2008 after Disney increased the licensing fee and slave labor graphics could no longer afford it despite Greg's intent to continue the story through at least two more limited series entitled Pendragon and Time Dancer. Factoring in all of that, is it canon? Yes, it is canon. Written by Greg Wiseman is the real deciding factor here. No reason to make the game any harder than it is. If you've ever wondered what really happens after season two, the answers are available for purchase now. In 1995, Tiger Electronics produced a handheld electronic game called Night Flight, while at the same time, Sega Genesis was the exclusive host for a side-scrolling platform jumper where players control Goliath, 
as he attempts to destroy the ancient relic known as the Eye of Odin. But is it canon? No, according to AskGregWiseman.com, Greg himself has never even played the games, and the show was in development at the same time as the games, so there was no coordination back and forth. Sorry, but the rules state that this is an automatic disqualification for canon consideration. Interested in gargoyles, but you missed it the first time around and or weren't born yet? The initial five episode story that was re-edited down to 90 minutes and titled Gargoyles the Movie The Heroes Awaken was released on VHS and Laserdisc in 1995 followed by four more tapes with the rest of season one in 1995 and 1996. In 2004, just in time for the 10th anniversary, season one was released on DVD with lots of bonus content. It would be followed by the first half of season two, 26 episodes in 2005. Eight years later in 2013, the second half was finally released. If you don't have a physical media player anymore, good news on October 14th, 2019, Disney announced that the entire series will be available to stream with the launch of Disney's subscription-based, on-demand service, Disney Plus, starting in November of 2019. And while Gargoyles was a marquee brand for Disney during the 90s and something that is still a valued part of their library today, they've never been able to get a feature film produced, either for lack of script, lack of director, or lack of interest on their part. In 2011, G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra writers David Elliott and Paul Lovett were hired to write a feature that resulted in an announcement followed by nothing. And in 2018, Jordan Peele himself expressed interest in taking on a Gargoyles movie, but Disney doesn't necessarily have a spot for it amidst all the Marvels and the Star Wars and the remakes and whatnot. A rare case where if they can't make it a big enough property, it appears that they would prefer to let it fade away. But hey, it starts streaming on Disney Plus in November. Perhaps a new era of fans will embrace it, and the Gargoyles will once again awaken from their slumber to protect the world from evil. If I had to say gargoyles one more time, I don't think I would have been able to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if gargoyles is enough to get you to subscribe to a subscription-based streaming service, or if you'd rather just leave all that behind, content with your memories and all the episodes that seem to still be available here on YouTube. They're gonna take them down, right? Who knows? Cease and desist, something? Cut.